Here comes a new challenger. Ladies, gentlemen, and variations thereupon, this is Modern Escape. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Oodles, the king of Iron Fist Tournament. Joining me today, master of Shaolin and ninja of the Lin Kuei clan, it's Biggie Zero. Oh, I like that, apart from the zero bit. <laughs> Sub, sub-zero, innit? Come on. I know. Reporter and Chinese Kung Fu master, it's Chung Candy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Heir to the Zaibatsu Corporation fortune and former king of the Iron Fist winner, it's Gadget Kazuma. And greetings. <laughs> and pink blob that can eat anything it wants, which in itself morphs in him into an inanimate object or absorbs the characteristics of his victims. It's Kirby Stig. <laughs> I'd just like to point out, I'm the one that actually has a Tekken tattoo here. <laughs> that's, why I, and you, that's why I did it. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Before we get into this show, please consider becoming one of our sexy and incredibly cool patrons. Help us divide and conquer the podcasting world. Details are in our show notes, but mainly check out our website, modernscapers.co.uk, for more exquisite content and links to everything we do. And don't forget to give us those five-star reviews. Come on. Come on. Oh, we're starving for them. I want to eat them. Love a nice the review. Reviews. The attention well, I mean, fuels oodles. Yeah, I know everyone asks Sustenance. for it, and we joke about it and everything, but it does actually help. So. It really does. Yes. Get it reviewed. And we need help. Speaking of help, it's time for Biggie's breaking news. You may already know, but he doesn't, because it's time for Biggie's breaking news. It's uh, been a big week of trailers, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. So, yes. who has seen the Indiana Jones: The Dial of Destiny trailer? What a shame them all. for a film. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> the Dial of Destiny. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> I, I have seen this trailer. Mm-hmm. 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 Next. I personally <laughs> are excited and a bit worried as well. Why are you excited? It, I think it looks great. So do you guys. Be- Fucking yeah, nonsense. because... Yeah, you're all, you, lot so, you, you two especially, Gadget and Noodles, everything these days is just like, that looks shit. That looks shit. <laughs> <laughs> the de-aging looks amazing. amazing. You are. Yes, yeah, the, 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 the agent really look, look amazing. Incredible. There's one shot where he's on a horse, which in no isn't actually Harrison Ford. It's a body double, so they've had to yeah. actually put his face over someone else's that looks a bit dodgy. But other and than I, that, that's what worries me a little bit. I think I'm going to be spending the whole movie trying to work out which bits are clearly Ford and which ones are clearly not. Anything where that, an eight-year-old man is running fast. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm wondering how jarring it's going to be and how much Are supposed to be, he's Is he supposed to be like 50, 60 or something like that, isn't it? I think, no, I think he's supposed to be his age because it isn't set in the late 60s or something, so that would have him... He's yeah. just kept his... Being he's in kept his, his 80s. He's yeah. kept his, like, um, finesse and his skills. I mean, Har- Harrison Ford is, like, one of the best punches in Hollywood, so, so he don't yeah. lose yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you, you, <laughs> you can't deny that. And I bet he is quite solid in real life. I want yeah. to fight him. It was just the Fuck music, that. and it's different people yeah. involved. It's got some better writers this time. I've I'm been just... stung by this before. <laughs> I know the last one was Spielberg, and usually that's kind of a... Seal of quality. Yeah, seal of quality, but... <laughs> well... Even Spielberg has these bad moments. Yeah. I mean, I like yeah, I like, we'll the, I like the, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge in it. She seems like she's going to have a pretty funny turn. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but you can't have a strong female character in a, in a film about a strong male, can we? No, 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 true. That's a, that's against the rules on the internet. <laughs> I, I just, you just know it. You know it. <laughs> unless, she, unless she's there going, Indy, help me. Yeah, unless she's tra- trapped in a basket. <laughs> yeah, that's all I want. Uh, yeah. Next up, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I haven't actually seen this. I haven't caught this yet. It's good. Yep, it's good trailer. trailer. Got our first um, look at Adam Warlock. Mm. He looks good. That, yep. The kid looks great. Got Soulstone in his head, so there's going to be yep. some kind of tinkering going on there. With I love Will Porter yeah. as well. I think yeah, Will Porter's great. What what else is he in? Uh, where the Millers? He was meant to be Pennywise as well. 
He was, he's he's one of those actors that's in a bit of everything. Yeah, you'll know him when you see him. He was in a Black Mirror episode. He was in Midsummer. Was in Midsummer, yeah. Oh, oh, I know, I know who he yeah. is. The eyebrow guy. Yeah, he's got serious the intense eyebrows. eyebrows. He's got eyebrows. <laughs> no, but like the ser- proper intense looking eyebrows. I've got mine covered up today. And also the <laughs> who's the other thing that's in it? Oodles. The high. Come oh, on, God. evolutionary. Harry of Evolution, that's it. I was going to say Inquisitor, but that's not it. Yeah. So <laughs> that's Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a crossover. But yeah, they got, it looks like there's going to be a bit more backstory into Rocket and someone's going to die. Which is clearly. some of the best uh, Guardians material, the Rocket stuff. Um, I think that was a glimpse of Rocket's girlfriend on there. Um, but the High Evolutionary is going to be a... If unless they do that Marvel thing where they kill off the good villains, yay! Probably don't want that to form for. Yeah, I, he's a he's a great villain. He way bigger villain than someone like Thanos. But you know, they, Hollywood they're all loves like that. Thanos. They are, they, <laughs> they, they just yeah, love, they, they, they killed love, Ultron too early. They killed Ultron. They killed <laughs> spoiler Gore. for Thor, but the um, Gore, yeah, like, Gore, Ego. <laughs> they killed all the good ones. All the, all the actual. <laughs> Powerful baddies that are way more powerful than Thanos. <laughs> Kill them off. Kill them off. This is why they can't oh, rush yeah. Galactus. <laughs> oh, I'd be dead in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> dead in a post credit. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Floating in space in his chair. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Uh, Super Mario Brothers, the second trailer is out. I'm more, oh, I didn't know there was one of them. I'm more into it this time because you get a bit more yeah. of the story, and uh, I'm, I'm still I don't care about the Chris Pratt voice at this point now. Like the rest of the film looks good. Um, I didn't know there was a second trailer. I didn't I, I, I didn't watch the first trailer until about three weeks after. Char- Charlie Day's Luigi's great. It's the right you know, voice. Was he, are they doing Italian American accents? Then? Nope, not really. Hmm. Chris Pratt is just Chris Pratt. He did do a Let's Go though. Yeah, and, uh, anyone, uh, anyone can all, do that. They're all just doing the. Normal voices. So I don't understand why everyone's getting so whipped about Chris Pratt. Every single one yeah. of them, apart from whoever's playing Toad, uh, it's Key Michael Key, I think, isn't it? Yeah, Keegan yeah. Michael Key. Apart from him, everyone else is just doing a normal voice. So well, that's, why that's does it probably work? best? It's probably fought best though, isn't it? Because they are actors. Yeah, exactly. So just who cares? At this point? <laughs> yeah. As long as the material's good. I mean, all this visual stuff in there looks great. Yeah, visually um, it looks it looks stunning. And there's like, was it references to Mario Kart and the Smash Brothers mm. in there? Oh, is yeah. there? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah the, the the trailer opens with Mario running into a Smash Brothers arena and getting his face stomped in by Donkey Kong. So, oh, Donkey Kong's in it. Yeah, yep. Everyone's in it, man. Literally everybody. I think Captain Falcon's going to be in it. Probably somewhere. Somebody already. <laughs> I, I I I can't tell if it's this parody or satire or what. It's Twitter, so it probably wasn't. Somebody called Mario going down Rainbow Road as woke propaganda. I've seen that. <laughs> oh, my word. What? Oh, tell me you rainbow. haven't ever played, played Mario rainbow. Kart. Yeah, it's all a rainbow. <laughs> so it's... Yeah, I saw oh, that. Oh, Mario's so LGBTQ+. Plus. Oh, no. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Just wait until he sees Bowsette. He'll lose his fucking mind. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I fucking wait till Pet to find out they're throwing uh, tortoises. No, I, I, I like it. I think it looks good. And the um, oh, damn it, I've forgotten who they were now. But the the writers of this have got pedigree for good, for a good film. I wish, yeah, I was really annoying. I forgot, but I remember hearing it on a podcast, the uh, Empire podcast. So, have they done da- uh, animated films? Because usually, yeah, you want yeah. animated people to do animated films, not non animated. Sorry, I wish I, I should have got this up, but uh, they did T Titans go to the movies. Okay. Oh, fucking right film. Yeah. That's such a good film. So if they can get the gag... That's actually made me excited for this yeah, now. I wasn't excited the gag, at all. The gag count that they get in Teen Titans go into this. Yes. If you've not Great. watched Teen Titans, oh, pff, <laughs> watch it, you idiots. It's so good. It is. Mm, cool. What else we got? Next up. Uh, Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. I have seen this. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking terrible. I'm not a fan of the movies in general. But... I'm not. Look, the shit. On, the only the only kind of saving grace this does have is it's by the Bumblebee team, and that was actually pretty good. Mm. Yeah, but, it was actually. Out of all of them, that's the best one in it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it doesn't have yeah. the characters from that film in it. So 
No, it's not the same Bumblebee, is it? No, and Haley Haley Steinfeld obviously is was in that, and she's not in this. So yeah, it's like the. It's, 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 I know it's not, but it's almost as if the Bumblebee is a se- separate continuity. Yeah, just you know what I mean. Because in in the first film, Bumblebee came down from space. Do you know what I mean? I don't think Who it's knows? really ascribe interesting lore to these films. They're robots They're not punching anymore. each other. No. <laughs> It was originally just like the first one, and then it, then we found out that I mean I've not I've read the synopsis I've not watched the films but it's the last night like that they were around during King Arthur it's medieval times medieval yeah. times yeah well, I mean I mean I'm not up on my Transformers expanded universe law but What's fucking wrong with you man but I I don't get that these particular robots transform from upright standing robots to giant. Ape robots? I thought the whole point of a Transformer was to be in disguise? Yeah, to blend in. Yeah. <laughs> the, Beast, the Beast Wars Transformers, they were on a different planet than Earth anyway. They were nothing to do with Earth, so I don't know why they're here. It's weird. Because they're on the wrong planet. Because they're running out of ideas and need to keep the franchise ticking along. Oh, it's fucking shy. I, I mean, I, shine. More, more than anything, CGI doesn't look particularly good in this one. Like, just, like, just watching it, everything looks really janky. It's just shite, man. You can't tell the difference between robots and stuff. No. It's fucking crap. It's crap, garbage. If you like, if it's some of your favourite films, get better You're taste. <laughs> yeah. Get better. Well, hats off to this one, because not only is the concept insane, so is the trailer. Cocaine bear. There's <laughs> a trailer for that. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. It looks so mad, and just Wait, something different. Much, it's it's Brilliant, mate. Have you seen the trailer? No. Do you know this? You know it's based on a true story, right? I was going to say it's based on a true story. Yeah. Other than yeah, other than the people that the, the bear obviously goes on malls because they obviously had to make some kind of film out of it. I was going to say, I, I, wasn't it a case of like the bear in real life lived for about five minutes? <laughs> it ate like <laughs> packets full of yeah. like huge packets full of go. like for a period of five minutes. Its lips. For a period of five minutes, it will have been the most dangerous apex predator on Earth. <laughs> but it only lived for five minutes. <laughs> Peaked too early, didn't it? Yeah. So this is so, yeah. they, they made like a horror comedy out of it, basically. And yeah. Elizabeth Banks says she's taken inspiration from like Sam Raimi. So all that kind of oh, yeah, she directed it. So yeah, it's, all uh, of that kind of. I, I do. I do want to see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll watch it at home. I'm going to cinema to see cocaine bear. <laughs> it's got the potential to be amazing or shit. Nothing in between. It's not going to be an average film. Yeah. It'll either yeah. be one of the best daft films ever made or one of the worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to love it. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. Unless it's good, then you'll hate it. Absolutely. <laughs> and finally up, uh, The Last of Us TV show had a, another premiere of its trailer. Has it? Huh? Yeah. Proper story one as well. It looks fucking mm. great. Like it's the most we've seen of it so far. Yep. Awesome. I hope yeah. it's good. Fully invested. I'm but looking forward to that. Release date, wasn't it? It's middle of but January. I know what January. happens in it. It's in January. <laughs> yeah, it looks very kind of a lot of the story beats, the same story beats as the film, uh, the game, sorry, and then it looks like they're just going to kind of fill it in with a few yeah, it's got some new side yeah, side stories. Rather than stuff. rather than how, how the game just skips seasons, they've got a lot of time to spread it out, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. January the 16th it comes out. Do you know what's quite nice from the trailer? It looks as though Ashley Johnson plays um, her mum in it. I don't know if she had one. I think it's probably just a flashback or mm. like a... Okay. Well, they, 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 said, they said that both Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson were in it and not in a cameo format. Like They will yeah. play characters in it, but not... John oh, well, Ellie. maybe she's... It, it might not necessarily be her. It might not be Ellie, but it looked like... Do you think way, Troy Baker's going to pout the, the caught, camera? Of course he is. Of course he is. <laughs> Let's hope there's not a whole episode on crafting. <laughs> there's going to be a whole episode of him pushing her to, across a river on a put some wood on a, on a pallet. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> what's that, what's that going to be available on then? Uh, it'll be now TV. Because oh, HBO. Well, I'll wait while it's all out and then I'll get a free trial. And of course, of course the internet has kicked off because N- uh, Nico Parker's been cast as uh, Sarah Miller um, and apparently she shouldn't be allowed to be dark-skinned. No, not in my Last of Us. One hundred percent agree. Get them off the screen, listeners. Biggie was rolling his eyes when he said that. <laughs> this 
disgusting. So next up, <laughs> uh, that's it for the traders. So in the world of gaming, Microsoft is selling mini hoodies for Xbox controllers. That's right. Quoted, How many have you got it's the candy? time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it's the time of the year where you may want to cozy up with a nice hoodie. This winter, don't let your controllers fill out with a mini controller hoodie. I mean, what the? That's fucking adorable. I've just looked adorable. it up. <laughs> <laughs> I really want one. Please don't get one. Just, Can you play it while the hoodie's on? I mean, the, I mean, the twi- a twenty four ninety nine. I'm not going to order one, but <laughs> that's at least you can get four of them, Candy. I know. Listen, I'm cold. My controller's going to be cold. I'm not cruel. <laughs> Candy, have you pre-ordered one? No, but I might do. If there's a Skyrim one or a Fallout one, hundred percent, she's buying. Goes ones. along with that Xbox <laughs> fridge she's got, and oh, you're such a fucking weirdo. I know. I'm just. I'm. Yeah. They absolutely any kind of merch, I will buy it. <sighs> if anything, I'd just use it on my genitalia. What? I just said genitalia. What? I heard that too. What? <laughs> What? Can you roll reverse? Can we reverse that, please? What did you say? I said, if anything, I'd wear it on my genitalia while playing. <laughs> you must have oh, so your genitalia shapes. is controller shaped. I was going to say, how does that work? Well, <laughs> yeah, no, because because the controller has kind of two things that hang down the yep. side, don't they? So you could put your balls yep. into that. How how yep. thin and is then, his dick? And then wrap it over and put the hood over you. <laughs> I'm going for the extra large hoodie. What's wrong with you? Or, or here's a thing: wear underpants. You fucking weirdo. <laughs> no, I was imagining it the other way: like dick through the one hole, and then your bum hole has another poop tube. So it just kind of like hang, hangs <laughs> front, underneath you, front to back, yeah. And then it, the, the hood covers no man's land. Candy, uh, personal question: When was the last time you actually saw some male genitals? It has been a while. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> Offers, please uh, anyway, boys. get into our PO box. Yes, boys, she is Sex. single, ready send to mingle. Your, uh, yeah, send in your flowers to a PO box. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, we should get the... a PO box, <laughs> swiftly on. <laughs> the uh, arguments between Sony and Xbox continue as Sony announced that the PlayStation Plus subscription service is still struggling. So Xbox basically came out to, well, why don't you just do what we're doing and <laughs> well, properly do it yeah. properly? <laughs> yep. It's it, so it, like it, it really just does feel like 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 Phil Spencer's just like seeing news like the news updates from Sony and going, what are they doing? <laughs> it, it feel, I feel like Phil Spencer's like the Phil Spencer's in his kindness is like, I still want you to succeed, guys. I know you're the the, the number one competitor, but just do it like we're doing. Come on, it works. Well, it works. Well, competition is good it. for the business, though. Mm. Of course, it is. Funny enough, I can't. My, my Microsoft are absolutely. Not frightened of Sony in any shape or form. They, they might not be winning be. in consoles, but they're yeah. not fucking scared of them. Microsoft can turn around and go, "You make all your games on our platform." <laughs> Do you, know what I mean? you need us, that kind of thing. <laughs> it's funny. And man. speaking funny of Sony, uh, crap. Still in Xbox world, Halo Infinite's multiplayer creative director has announced he's leaving the studio. Tom French shared the news that after 11 and a half years on Halo, he's stepping out from his Spartan armor for the last time today to head off to new adventures. So basically, he's been there, I would say, pretty much from the beginning, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I wish you'd not told me that. I'm not going to sleep tonight now nah, with worry. But with Infinite's <laughs> delays with all its multiplayer and... <laughs> Maybe he doesn't need the job. He, he hasn't got a job to do. <laughs> they have had issues, so I guess maybe it's time for a fresh start, perhaps. I mean, oh God, it must... they've had more than issues. Well, yeah, the main game was delayed for a start. Hey, it was the second coming when that came out. You guys were loving it. The campaign was great, but the yeah, multiplayer is just You're supposed to be death. still playing it. It's fucking Halo. Back in the day, that's all people played. Even I, I loved Halo. I love, I love playing Halo when we get on and get enough of us together and play it. But there's loads of Nobody other wants to. There's loads of other games out. Like, there's new <laughs> shooters out. There's pretty... You know, the Warzone comes out and then the, the Warhammer game comes out. It's like, it's not, it's it's fun. It ain't good enough to have me playing it I suppose time. when the first Halo came out, there wasn't as loads of drops of games coming out all the time, was there? Certainly wasn't as many online shooters. No, definitely not. It came out at perfect time. I, I fucking loved playing uh, Halo multiplayer back in the day. I didn't own the Xbox, but when I went to my pals, oof, some good nights. 
Over Read to the, the uh, world of film. Come on. Pulp Fiction and Avengers star Samuel Jackson has pushed back against Tarantino's recent comments. So Tarantino came out and basically said, you have all these actors who have become famous playing these characters, but they're not movie stars, right? Captain America is the star, or Thor is the star. I mean, I'm not the first person to say that. I think that's been said a zillion times. But it's like, you know, it's these franchise characters that become a star. So Jackson retorted and said, it takes an actor to be one of those particular characters, and the sign of movie stardom has always been what? Arses in seats? What are we talking about? That's not a big controversy for me to know that, apparently. These actors are movie stars. Chadwick Boseman is Black Panther. You can't refute that. He's a movie star. Tarantino's just pissed off that they all keep their shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this in our Discord, and I think there's merits to both sides. Um, what they were getting yes. at was, it, at one point it used to be, I'm going to see the next Arnold Schwarzenegger film, I'm going to the next Stallone film, yeah. Van Damme film. It wasn't a character or anything. It was the next... That it was that movie star. It was their next film you were going to see. Whereas yep. now it's I'm going to see the next Marvel film, regardless of who's in it. But I bet uh, on the flip side, did... what... go on. Sorry. On the flip side, what I said about that was th- those films have given these people, like Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth, um, o- others, Chadwick Boseman, a, a bigger platform, and a people, boost, were... yeah. yeah, and people then became more interested in seeing their work outside of that the MCU. Mm. Yeah. Tom so, Holland has owned Spider Man now, hasn't he? Yeah, I so bet if you did a um, consensus on the street, 100 people, you showed a picture of um, Robert Downey Jr., and you went, Who's that? I bet most of them would say Iron Man. You're, bro- you're probably right. Downey Jr. You're probably yeah. right, so, especially with like, Chris Evans. That's kind of what I think Tarantino was saying. I'm not sticking up for him. I mean, I love his films, but I don't like him. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> just another in a long line of kind of. It's the boomer directors getting pissed off that things it are changing. It seems like jealousy to me. <laughs> It, it really mm. screams jealousy in a weird way. Like, yeah. oh, I mean, his, I mean, his films me are still an attraction. A Tarantino yeah. film. Yeah, people go it's still to the cinema a, to see exactly. films. It's still an attraction. So I don't know why he's getting so worked up about it. Because mm. he's, he's trying to put people off the fact that he's got one more film in him. One left. One left. And you've got to retire. That's the rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next up. Next. In reference to uh, the Indie Trader earlier, Disney researchers have created a new neural network that can alter the visual age of actors in TV or film. Technology will allow TV or film producers to make actors appear older or younger using an automated process that will be less costly and time-consuming than previous methods. Great. And some of the stuff I've seen for that looks really cool, very clever. This is cool, right? This is all cool, yeah. well and good and stuff, but they they talk about, oh, this, that, and that. But this is stopping new Actors becoming actors if they're just going to make the, the no. established ones younger again, surely. No, it means it means you get a lot of a lot better creativity at um, lower budgets. Because if you think if you think traditionally, if you want to if you want to make if you want to do a scene of an actor and their character is older, they have to spend yeah. five hours in makeup <laughs> yeah. to get it done. Like, or it get costs, somebody that looks like them, or or get another actor. Either way, equally as expensive. It takes yeah, time. It looks poor half the time. It, it takes time. Yeah, unless unless you really spend the money on it and have like the best makeup artist, it can look shit. It's like well, look at that actor that used to play Tom Hanks older. He was in Apollo thirteen. He was in um, he was in a few of his other other films as older. Same yeah. Private Ryan is in that. It's the same. They use use, use the same guy because he looks like older Tom Hanks. What's wrong with that? Might not be practical for every actor. I suppose, but, yeah. but also, also the point is, it works for lower budget film. Like Disney will license this technology yeah. in the same way that um, that that big LED screen stage that they use that the Disney invented for the Mandalorian allows people to do really high concept sci fi stuff or fantasy stuff cheaper because they don't have to build a load of sets and they can like alter them in real time and stuff like that. This is good technology. I like it. Yeah, yeah it I is. But it I don't great. know. I'd, I'm not try- I get your point. I'm trying. I'm trying to sound point. like. Tarantino, I kind of like old style cinema in a way. It was also like mentioned it, like, somewhere that actors could also sign off their rights so that after they've passed away, they could continue to act in movies. Biggie, you've got stowaway. <laughs> <laughs> Keep this in. <laughs> Say well, hi that- to everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Well, that barricade thing sure worked, yeah, didn't that, it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely work. brilliant, that. <laughs> yeah, the bucket didn't even land on her head. Look at it. The bucket didn't even land on her head. 
Biggie, it's not going to work when the when the cupboard door goes the same way as the normal door. <laughs> don't don't t- don't tell him about physics. You'll blow his mind. Blow his mind. <laughs> she's she's clearly got my superhuman strength. <laughs> cupboard door still open, mate. It's bugging me. Can you go close it, please? You need to have opposing <laughs> forces. <laughs> just go. Just work with each other. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Unbelievable, Jeff. Right, moving on. Uh, director Ang Lee is now playing a film about uh, Bruce Lee. And he hasn't had to look far for a star because he's casting his own son, Mason Lee, in the lead, who's apparently been working out and trying to buff himself up, you know, with all muscles and stuff for the role. No, percent body fat, you mean? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so many God, Lees Bruce in one Lee sentence. He was so ripped. Mm-hmm. He was so ripped. Yeah. Like, no body fat whatsoever. Just... <laughs> It was so very specifically ripped as well, though. Like, like he's, yeah. he's still like a tiny guy. But yeah. Oh, he's tiny. He's like the most compact like collection of pure muscle I've ever that you've yeah. ever seen in cinema. His body was like, you know he's got no You're bones like... in there. It's just muscle oh, all no. the way to the core. No organs. You, or you won't like see that. anyone like that ever again. In <laughs> it's one of a kind. It's just absolutely. Yeah. It looks uncomfortable to sit down being him. Like it's no nothing soft at all. Just. It'd ah, be interesting to muscle. see. What Ang Lee does with that, because he obviously has a history of martial art movies, but whether yeah. he'll just do a lot of action stuff or would he actually go into all the, the deep stuff about Bruce Lee? But yeah, interesting I wonder, to I, see. I wonder if um, the, Lee, the Bruce Lee estate has signed off on this because they're famously litigious over yeah. his image. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, like, yeah. Dragon, like, remember Dragon, the Bruce Lee story? Yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah. Really yeah like, he didn't get off the ground. Like, I don't think, it would be one thing, like, if, there, if there has ever any, been anything negative to Bruce Lee's private life, That'll never come out in a film like this, will it, if they, if they have their way? Speaking of martial arts, the game Sifu is getting a live-action movie adaption from John Wick writer, described as basically, yes, a John Wick meets M. Night Shyamalan's old. I forgot that game even came out. I've never even played it. Is it good? It's good. Yeah, I like it. It's really You really feel like you're fighting in that game. It'd be interesting to see what they decide to do about a movie version there. So I, I would say, how, 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 okay. is it, how is it going to work for a movie? Does it have a story? Yeah, it has a story. Standard revenge story. I've got to go and kill Yeah, but as box. your character goes on and upgrades, you can actually die, but then you come back at a slightly well, older version of yourself. They'll use that the Disney moves. technology, won't they? <laughs> exactly. There you go. I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think you should like start making a film and, and, and have the concept be anything meets M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan. No, yeah. I really feel like that. Yeah, that, 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 oh, should, that should be a, that should be a barrier to you getting funding. I've heard that old <laughs> shite. It is shite, shite. It's awful. It's the worst. It's at the bottom of my films from last year. <laughs> but the beach makes you old. The concept. Looking forward to that. I mean, the concept could really work. <laughs> it's just the execution. Yeah. People screaming out for like seafood game film coming out. God, <laughs> happening now. Literally dozens of them. Uh, all tens of them. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, our, our, our filmmaker, S.S. Rajamuli, has won the Friend Best of the Director show. for the New York Film Critics Circle Awards. Well deserved. Yeah, friend of the show. You've got anything to add on that? Movie. Stig is our Indian correspondent. <laughs> hey, I'll put it in there. I just thought it was quite, <laughs> quite nice to see a Western audience recognising... You know, yeah. uh, it is a fucking proper good from, film, though. Yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's you know, there's all, there's plenty of proper good films that come out of the Asian or yeah. Indian market that we just never hear about and never get recognition. Yeah. So it's nice that they actually do when they actually do. I fuck, I I love the cinematography out in Indian films. They fucking know how to work a camera. Them fuckers, I swear, it's insane. Yeah, it's insane mm. some of the stuff that they pull off, and they do it relatively cheaper than. Anyone else in the world can do it. It's just fucking oh, marvellous magic. Sponsor of the show, Bethesda, Todd Howard, who shed more light on Amazon's up-and-coming Fallout adaption. Uh, speaking on a podcast, the show's executive producer stated that the up-and-coming series is not a retelling of a game story. Rather, it will take place in a separate area of the world's map. So, as executive producer, Candy, can you tell us anything about this? Has anyone seen any of the pictures on Reddit or uh, yeah. any of the leaks? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ooh, don't go on Reddit. <laughs> it looks oh, the vault stuff, like the um, interior of the vaults, looks so accurate to the games. It looks incredible, but it looks like it's some of the pictures. I think it's set in several vaults. So I think it was vaults thirty-three and thirty-two. We've seen pictures of. 
um, which kind of suggests it's more towards New Vegasy type area, or yeah, certainly towards it, the West Coast. So, have yes. you seen Walton Goggins yet? What's he no, doing? No, we haven't seen we haven't seen any cast members nope. yet. I hope he's a ghoul. He is a ghoul. There's a um, there's a picture of him in front of a sign that says Walton yes. Goggins ghoul. But whether I mean that might he be looks like one. He does. He doesn't need much makeup. No, he's oh, he's such a good actor. Levin. I'm so. I'm only going to watch it for him. <laughs> I actually hope we're going to get a trailer at the Game Awards because um, there's been one official screenshot that's I hope we don't, so Jeff Keighley can't lord it over everybody. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the Jeff Fuck show that. again. But yeah, there's, there's been one official screenshot that's come out and that definitely looks like it's, it's potentially from a trailer. So there's let's, be, let's, be, let's be absolutely crystal clear here, Candy. If it came out and everyone says it's shit, you're still going to love it. Of course I am. I love mm-hmm. Fallout mm-hmm. 76. <laughs> Again, all uh, tens of you. <laughs> still has a loyal fan base. Of ten people. Which you dropped yes. out of when they started charging monthly. Yes. That's when I fell out charge, of love with it. it. They charge monthly for Yes, it. for Fallout first. Oh, fuck. It is ah. optional, though. You get an extra You get, like, camp. free flags and stuff. You don't you get, get much. You, get, you can have your own private server, although I don't know why you would, because there's only about 30 people per server anyway, it and you gives, can have gives, a... Um, gives you more unlocks in the battle pass as well. Yeah, and you, oh, you can a have battle a, pass. Yeah, a second camp, I think. <laughs> Everyone was screaming for a battle pass in a Fallout game. It's what the world wanted. <laughs> fucking stupid, man. Have a word with your fucking husband, Candy, and make a good game again. Um, also, I watched that yeah. entire interview, and it was about three hours long, and I loved every moment of it. Actually, one thing I did take from that interview was when he was talking about... Actually, he wasn't talking about Starfield. He was talking about upcoming games. And he said he made a point of um, it was a conscious decision that they would sometimes take away the fidelity to um, make those worlds as big as they are. So every NPC is actually going about their business, whereas in most games you just wouldn't see it, but they are still happening. So he, was, he says he sort of they take away a bit of fidelity and a bit of um, like frames per second. So to me, that sounded like he was alluding to the fact that Starfield might be thirty frames per second. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have an Xbox anyway, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next. Speaking of fan bases, Ring, Rings of Power fans were shocked as the star Joseph Morley quit his role as Adar or Adar ahead of season two. One of the two. best characters in the fucking show. Yeah. Yeah. Sad about that. <laughs> what but he will be replaced by Peaky Blinders actor Sam Hazeldine. Hazeldine? I'm not really sure what that is. I'm not trying to think this guy. If it's the person I think it is, he's pretty Blinders. good. It's not Killian Murphy, that's all I care about. No, I think it's his brother in the show. Oh, the one with the mustache? Yes, who I'm thinking it is. Um... Let's get down to town and get fucking Mickey Blinders. <laughs> Mickey Blinders. <laughs> that little brummy accent. <laughs> it's a good show. All right, mm. all right, Stig, I'll watch it then, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> George Sewell. So, no, I don't know who he was. I can't remember who George right. Sewell was. Fucking Peaky Blinders. <laughs> Next. <laughs> anyway, sadly, I'm going about this. Midnight Club has been cancelled by Netflix. Yeah, that's a bummer. John, they left I it thought you meant the game by well. Rockstar then. <laughs> yeah, well, John Flanagan's actually gone on... Um, and actually posted uh, basically the ideas that he had for season two, and maybe a third one. He's actually explained what's happened to all the characters that they had planned. So he did so come if out you and want say, to find out, you can read that. Yeah, he did come oh, out and bad. say at the end of the last one, if it doesn't get renewed, that he would release it on Twitter or something. But I think there's something to be said about assuming that it's going to get renewed, because Netflix, you can't count on anything. And I think quite a lot of no. people watched it as well. I really liked it. Yeah. It's their stupid. It's, it's their stupid metrics. Yeah, yeah. they That's don't. They don't say. seem to. They don't seem to take into account that some people might not watch it straight away mm. because they're watching other things. Yeah, and can, so can, if, it's kind of at the point now where it's not worth getting invested in a first season of a new show on Netflix. You got to wait. Yeah. Once I've confirmed a second season, then I'll start watching it. <laughs> hey, they renewed Sandman, so the, the goodies in my back. I was going to cancel them this just, year, but I've, I've decided not to. Just, yes. just renewed. <laughs> but all the pressure it, still on that good one. in my books. Yeah, I know they'll they'll cancel it after season two. I'm telling you now, bastards. 
Speaking of Next. renewed series, The Mandalorian will be returning with his pal Grogu on March the 1st on Disney+. Plus. Good stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked the last season. It was good. You need to watch two episodes of Boba Fett to know where that yeah. show goes as well. <laughs> no, it's not the last two, is it? It's, yeah. it's one, one in the middle and one at the end, isn't it? Yeah, what a weird way. Because if you go back to that yeah. show without watching Boba Fett, you'd be yeah. like, eh? <laughs> there, 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 there was confused. a full episode like, where it's just about Mandalorian, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, just because of how that second season ends, something happens in Boba Fett which kind of messes around with that. So, yeah, I think it took a while to get off the ground for me with Mandalorian, but I end of season two, I was I was all in. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. I think it's good. I watched. Uh, I, I saw a TikTok of um, people at Disney World. Uh, today and someone walks past he's dressed up as Din Djarin, and he's got a Grogu in a little pouch at the front. Someone's like, mm. oh look it's Baby Yoda and he just stops and goes he's not called Baby Yoda, his name is Grogu and then just like kind of walks off in a huff. <laughs> <laughs> he's in character. This is the way. Yeah they're all like in character and they, they've got all like voice changes and everything that makes him sound exactly the same. Really? I've seen the Kylo Ren Ooh. one, he's fucking frightening him. Yeah they look brilliant. Yeah they do look brilliant. Oh bless him. Good Speaking job, of things that isn't that. brilliant, um, everything's happening. The uh, foreshadowing of Robocop and Terminator 2 is finally happening. In San Francisco, the ruling board of supervisors have now voted to let the city's police use robots that can kill. Oh, I thought you meant the singularity had happened. <laughs> finally, the, the, AI the, uh, took over. <laughs> The measure permits police to deploy <laughs> robots equipped with explosive in extreme circumstances. And this includes... Where did I have it here? Uh, robots could potentially be equipped with explosive charges to breach fortified structures containing violent, armed, or dangerous subjects. They can also be used to incapacitate or disorient violent, armed, or dangerous suspects who pose a risk of loss of life. <laughs> this is all you need in that country where they have the world's most dangerous police force. <laughs> Drones with bombs attached to them. But you know what's going to happen? One's going to get hit by lightning and then number five is alive and it's reading books in some <laughs> random woman's house. <laughs> with a racist accent. With a racist accent and being chased by a man in brown face. <laughs> <laughs> Fisher Stevens will have woken up and seen this new story and gone, my time is soon. <laughs> I am back. <laughs> this is terrible. This is a terrible idea. This yep. is a terrible idea. But before we get into politics, let's skip this story and go on to the next one. No, that's it, mate. That's the end. Oh, we'll end on that bombshell then. Pun intended. <laughs> Whee! Let's move on to the Nexus. What we've been doing, guys, I want to know, Biggie, word on the grapevine is you've not done out this week. It's very true. I've either been playing a bit of COD or watching a bit of The Sopranos, and that has pretty much been my week, unfortunately. This is the great much time show I've anything made, else. So. Of course. It's worth watching if you're listening to this and you've still not seen Sopranos. <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, do yourself a favour and check that out. Whatever you do. If you had a shake. Fucking So, hell. so good. I, wa- so, so I watched good. a clip the other day, just a random clip, and I was just like... And you wanted to watch it all again? I really, I really need to watch this again. <laughs> <laughs> it's never been bested to this day. It's the best show ever made. It's just fucking flawless. But that was enough chatter to get it onto the pod art. Let's move on <laughs> to Candy. Yeah, I've had a bit of a uh, quiet week as well, really. I've been cracking on with God of War, but what I did watch was um, possibly the most uh, unironically cringy show that I have ever seen, and that's the second season of Mighty Ducks Game Changers. So, uh, of course you watched that. Of course you watched that. Well, it's, a nice, it's kind of a feel-good, but... Anyway, I have to. I have to watch it as ice hockey. So we haven't got Emilio uh, Estevez coming back as coach Bombay this season, I think. Was he was... in it anyway? He was in the first season, yeah. What does he look like nowadays then? Yeah, is he still uh, alive? Martin does Sheen. He, he looks like Martin Sheen. Does he? He looks <laughs> yeah. like his dad. Oh, All right. Amazing image. He looks, he looks better than Charlie Sheen does, though. Well, yes, because yeah. Charlie Sheen was named after his drug of choice. <laughs> 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 and he's not talking about yeah. Mr. Sheen. Um, no. So yeah, just oh my god, it's. It, I mean, it, I get it. It's meant for kids. It really is. Um, but once again, the ducks have somehow got to the top of the competition with the power of friendship and a positive mental attitude. No, they're uh, they're still teenagers. Teenagers. Um, yeah. 
no training whatsoever. They're meant to have gone to this like elite top of the top camp for all the top teams. And they're kind of thrown in with all the um, all the cup winners and everything. So of course, they end up winning. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely no training whatsoever. There's also this like really terrible, and I don't e- I don't even know if they were taking the piss, but they're uh, they're sitting around the campfire and they're singing, and it's really really badly lip synced. And oh my god, it was just the most awful thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. But despite that, I did actually enjoy it. It's just um, kind of brainless feel-good viewing. Is it the same level as like Cobra Kai? No, it's it's like no, I said, it's no completely un- it's completely unironic. It doesn't oh. realise the cringe. I don't think it does. Oh, unless no, I don't think it does. <laughs> unless they've tricked you. They might have done, but I don't think so. I think they're being really earnest in a kind of Disney kids kind of a way. No, maybe the slap shot of you right between your legs, mate, and you've been done in. <laughs> you've been done in by the ducks. I'll, I'll the, the cartoon, the Mighty Ducks cartoon, when they were actually anthropomorphic ducks. That I remember that. That was good. That was a good show. <laughs> Bring that back. I would like to know what the <laughs> listeners think, whether it is ironic or not. I don't think it is, you know. Well, please write in with your Mighty Ducks feedback. <laughs> <everybody>. <laughs> That's your homework. <laughs> we need it. Please do it for Candy. Also, send in your um, Tinder requests for Candy as well. <laughs> I mean, pe- people seem to like it. It's got 87% on Rotten Tomatoes. Bloody hell. Mm. Wow. Okay, let's move on. I'll go next. <laughs> I watched... Um, I'll really quickly talk about... Uh, I was at my mate's house when we were watching the BBC. All right, it's the BBC. I watched a show that was fucking terrible, and again, I want my time back. It's called I Can See Your Voice. Have you ever heard of this? No. Is that where they're like walking down got... some stairs or something? They decide to date them no. based on their singing voice. It's got Paddy McGuinness in it. Do you know the oh, PK of course it has. hanger on a person from Top Gear? Uh, Amanda Holden, uh, that was Shaggy Les Dennis. That's what she was famous for. And that funny woman. I like this woman. Hey, uh, Amanda Holden. She pushed, she pushed the man in water on this morning that time. Remember her? Oh, what's her name? I forgot. Alison Summer, Alison Summer. Alison Hannigan. Pushed a ma- no, no, Hannigan, that's the fucking Buffy. She pushed someone in water. She's brilliant. She's got Papa got a really infectious laugh and stuff. She... I know who you mean. Yeah, I can't remember her name. Alison Hannigan. Right? Yeah. Yes. She, 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 do you know on that fucking on this morning when they're on that yeah. fucking map? <laughs> she pushed a man in water by accident. <laughs> Such a good clip. <laughs> she's in it. She also she's, got pissed with only... Harrison Ford. Yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, she did. She's the only redeeming factor of the show. Basically, what it is is. Oh, it's one of them lip sync things again, where people come in and the lip sync stuff, and you've got to guess if they're actually good singers or not. It's shite. Don't oh, watch it. God. Why are they putting money into this kind of thing? But again, it's that lowest common denominator shit that people like to watch on a Saturday evening. I just wanted to highlight how crap it is. Don't watch it. BBC, stop paying TV licenses, guys. Come on. Uh, the main thing I want to talk about is I got a game code and I'm doing a review. A review! I got a game for the Nintendo Switch called The Night Witch. Ooh. <clears throat> the Night Witch is a Metroidvania adventure game with fast-paced shoot-'em-up combat set in a beautiful hand-drawn world. Cast devastating card-based spells, forge close bonds and make moral choices, all in your quest to save your home and discover who's behind the war golem invasion. I was asked to say that. That is not my words. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um... The Night Witch, published by Team 17. It is available on everything, PC, Xbox One, Xbox Series, PS4, PS5, Switch, and it's just come out. Um, <clears throat> Team 17 lately have been publishing a lot of these just like throw at the wall, see if it can stick kind of games. Yeah. Um, now, this is a Metroidvania, but unlike other Metroidvanias, you are flying and you, you, you fire projectiles. You've got guns and stuff and magic. Do you know what? I really like it. That's, what, that's the first thing I can say about it. But it's going to put a lot of people off because it's very, very hard. What, 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 you know, what, what are the, I'm watching the trailer right now. What are the controls like? Because, I mean, because she's flying, it looks very fluty. Like, do you it lack is floaty. Pre- do, you, yeah. do you lack precision in it? Uh, you, can, you can aim. You can aim, but you can auto-aim as well if you want to make right. it that a little bit easier. But when you auto-aim, it's whatever's closest to her she'll shoot. Right. But it's, it's good, but... 
I'm playing it on the wrong console. I'm playing it on Switch. Now, I have to use my Pro Controller to really feel the benefits of playing it well. It's pretty as hell anything. And the weird thing is, it does the Metroidvania, but it's got these, like a bond system where everyone in the town, this underground town that you all escaped from, because the world ended at the beginning, basically. So you all live underground. And you've got like forged bonds with people, and it's, it's kind of a bit like Persona in a weird way. You know, when you've got to talk to people, give them gifts and that yeah. kind of thing. <clears throat> and I, it's really good because all the characters are quite fleshed out, all the NPCs and stuff. So you get to know them. You go, oh, God, Bert, you're such an idiot. You always do this kind of thing. Like, do you know what I mean? You get to know them as the adventure progresses. But yeah, oh, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, I beat it, but, you know, when you you beat something, you think, oh, I've only just beat that. <laughs> <I didn't... laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck it. Oh, that was st- like when you went Elden Ring, for instance, when you beat the final boss, like, oh, we only just beat that. <laughs> or that kind of thing's like. Or getting anywhere near the Radiance and Hollow Knight. Oh, yeah, the, yeah exactly. But that's but optimal, cuddle, isn't veteran. it? Yeah, those kind of things. It's like, I suppose you could put it down to this easiest settings, but I'm not that kind. Of, I, I, I don't know what it is. I can't. I can't do that. I, I never have been able to because I feel like I breeze through games that way. But it's accessible enough. If if you've ever played like, do you know the Metroidvanias that are like underwater and you're a submarine and stuff like those type of games? Yeah, that's all it is basically. It's one of them, but without water, you're just flying around. It just feel. It does feel like she is in water as she's floating around. Really easy to control. But it's the aiming is just not precise on a Joy-Con at all. It, look, it looks lovely, but this is definitely one I need to have a demo of before I buy it. Yeah, yeah. I think there is a demo on it, actually, on Nintendo eShop. But it, it's good. Um, it's come out at a very strange time. You don't need to play this game. I'm, I'm not forcing you to play this game. It's like a proper solid like 7 out of 10 for me. Yeah. Um, I really like it. It's cheap as well. It's cheap. Obviously, I didn't pay for it, but it is really cheap. And I think, again, with Team 17, they're publishing loads of stuff at once. Sometimes you think to yourself, what? Just slow down. Slow the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up because I do like them as developers and publishers because sometimes some absolute gold comes through. You know, like, uh, is it Yoku's Island Express? Yeah. That's, mm, that's how you do it. But yeah, they still, you, you still never been, Hollow Knight's still never been beaten on Switch for a Metroidvania. And I think this generation's best Metroidvania ever. Well, there is a demo for it. Last. There's a demo for it on Steam, so I'll give it a try. Yeah, I, I reckon it'd be better with a mouse, actually. Genuinely, you get more precision and stuff. But yeah, I, give it a try. It's not expensive. Uh, Night Witch. It's got a really good story. So if you're not used to playing in a, a Metroidvania with a really good story, this is definitely a shock. But yeah, that's my week. Review done. I did it. Stig, what have you been up to? Oh, I've done a bit of a biggie for once, yeah. for a while. But, um, yeah, just been focused on God of War, really. Um, did, How far oh, are you, mate? We are spoiling it. Only about Chapter 8. Mm-hmm. Um, watched Raiders of the Lost Ark after seeing the Indy 5 trailer with my daughter. She really loved it, so that was a yeah. bonus. <laughs> it's really good, isn't it, Raiders? Yeah. I did see a film. So, seeing as though not uh, most people haven't done anything, I'll I'll quickly touch on this film because it was really good. Me and Biggie have worked this week, haven't we, mate? We've been working. <laughs> Gadget, sorry, I've done, oh, I've done it again. You fucker! Done it. <laughs> you little <laughs> bastard! I want to come down there and snap mm. you in half. Mm. I'm not in my head as well because I have been working. What? We One mean we mean creatively working. One of them just needs to grow some hair, don't they, Oodles? That's it. Just yeah. At least yeah, one... easy as that. One. It's so easy to grow air. You just sit there and it happens. Come back to me in five years and say that, Stig. <laughs> yeah, that, that airline's struggling. So <laughs> in. It's thinning. <sighs> uh, yeah, ball, so I watched um, a film called After Sun. It's a uh, film directed by Charlotte Wells. Uh, it's a story of a girl called Sophie who reflects on a shared joy and pride <coughs> melancholy of the holiday she took with her father 20 years earlier. Uh, memories, real and imagined, fill in the gaps between like a mini DV footage and she tries to reconcile the father she knew with the man she, she didn't. And if, I, if I'm being honest, 
the film is fairly mundane in a in a way that it just follows this father and his teenage daughter. I think she's meant to be thirteen in the in the um in the film. And it just follows mm. their their holiday when they're together at this Turkish resort in the nineties. <laughs> nothing happens. Yeah, nothing happens, but it's just really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I know one, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's just one of those ones where you're just following this story and this connection between this father and this. You don't need daughter. high stakes. No, and like I said, the you get glimpses of them through the uh the lens of the video recorder that she's like constantly recording on. And you get like memory you know, normal looking film. And it's kind of piecing all that together and every now and again it goes back to her kind of watching these cl- these videos and trying to re- remember this kind of estranged father figure. And then within mm. all that you get his struggles. He's still clearly not over the separation from her mother. Like every time he's on the phone to her, he always ends it with saying love you to her. <clears throat> so he's still yeah. really struggling with that. You see moments of him like really kind of not getting to grips with this with this breakdown in his relationship and which has obviously caused a bit of a breakdown with his relationship with his daughter. But at times their relationship always as well comes across really sweet and really nice. Yeah. Um and yeah, it just kind of left me feeling a bit sad at the end. Um But in in, in like a, a way that touched you. Yeah, so. yeah. Especially like as having daughters. Like I think it's really that like it just kind of makes you want to go and give him a cuddle afterwards. Like it was just kind of, yeah. yeah, it just kind of hit you when it ended and I thought it was just really good and just really well acted. Um, it stars Paul uh, Mescal uh, as the, the father. Um, and yeah, it's, if you kind of like those films where sometimes not a lot happens, but I do, it's a nice kind of human story. Then yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Um, if you would say if you've got any kind of if you ever had any issues with your father if you're if you're a woman you've had a, any issues with your father or vice versa if you're a father with a with a daughter and there's any issues in there that i would kind of maybe give it a little bit of a trigger warning on that front yeah just because it could what's kinda, it called again after sun after sun yeah I'm, I'm going to give it... I, I like those type of films. I do. I like them nothing films. Yeah. Good cinematography, good actors. Yeah, it's pretty much what you get with it. It's 102 minutes long. So it's wow. Not, so it's not Perfect. even that long. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you, mate. Gadget. Yes. If that's even your name. It is. <laughs> Happy birth certificate updated and everything. Um, so... It's a biggie. <laughs> anyway, a uh, couple of things this week. So I've been carrying on with God of War. Um, I'm getting further in. I think I'm about three quarters of the way through now. So I should get it finished this week. Um, I, finally, finally, I love the fact that we can be talking here and Noodles just wanders off. <laughs> finally, rude! How dare you, sir? Give me your full attention. <laughs> I've, I've got my AirPods in. I can hear you everywhere, mate. I know, but I can see you just wander off, and then I get, and then I hear. Finally! From the distance. <laughs> anyway. Oh, wait. Oh, and uh, I think, what, for the world's quickest wee? I don't know. Boys can wee really quickly. I went to turn an alarm off, actually. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I in, in a bout of poor timing, uh, Pip and I went away this weekend, so I've only had a chance to play half an hour of the Callisto Protocol. Um, the it makes a strong first impression, but I can tell you what, Dead Space, it ain't. It's very much not Dead Space. If you look in front of the desk, basically every review I've, I've read says it starts off good. Do you know <laughs> what? I, I'm actually quite happy I'd never played Dead Space because that seems to be really holding everyone back on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the th- I mean Ooh. the thing is like the, the, in a the way op- in a silly yeah. way. Like, yeah. I'd like to play those yeah, games. No, but, I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. The opening half an hour, forty five minutes that I've played of it so far has been fine. It's been good. Um, the combat I'm a little weirded out by. Um, you move about, you flip about a bit. Yeah, it, it, it the, the the problem is it it's it's deliberately imprecise. Like the whole the, yeah. the whole thing is it's melee combat, so like the the monsters will like, come up and swing for you, and you've got to dodge out the way. But it's not like like Souls or Elden Ring or anything where you like tap to the side and press B to jump to the side. You just have to hold a direction on the stick. Mm. But, Ooh, I don't like that. But the direction doesn't need to relate to which direction you need to dodge. 
Oh, but when they no. come when they come for the backswing, you then have to flip it to the other direction. So there's a couple of times I've been getting myself oh. really fucking turned around with which direction I should be going. That's how you get joystick drift as well from yeah. games like that. Um, uh, it I, has worryingly though it has it has reviewed lower than Dead Space Three. <laughs> The, the the one thing it's taken from Dead Space, which I don't like, is so you know it's got his his, his health on the back of um uh, on the back of his neck. Um, yeah, it's so hard to read. It's not the same as having the big lights on the back of Isaac Clark. Plus, but, he's moving about a lot. Yeah, but they've taken the same mechanic because I'm colorblind. I can't see when it goes from gr- from green to yellow. Oh no! no because it's so on small it. on the back of his neck, you can't see it. I can't what, see it. What anyway. console you got it on? PS Five. So just look at the controller. Is that any different colour? I will report back on that. But then again, you probably <laughs> have difficulties with that changing as well. Well, no, because that would be more stark because it's not against skin colour. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, I mean, so... It's definitely, far, um, it's definitely had some mixed reviews, though, hasn't it? Oh, like, some mixed. Definitions of, mixed reviews. I've said it's really good, recommended, 9, 8 out of 10, yeah. and then you've got some... The big ooh, sites have, have trashed it. The, the smaller sites have said... I mean, you're, oh, you're a game of recommended. Go. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah did. they did. Yeah, they did. It is beautiful though. So the graphics are some of the best I've seen. I don't think anyone's knocked its graphics. Ever. It's a, it, in fact, it, the, there's been a couple of shots in it, especially kind of facial animation shots, have kind of put God of War to shame. Oh, they got very um, detailed. Josh De, De Hamel's forehead perfect as well, didn't they? Yeah. Um, How about the death scenes? I, I've only yeah. had a couple. So the very first one I got was it was, too good. was it died. was in a tutorial fight because again I'm getting used to this kind of dodging mechanic. And it, it, it was brutal because this, mon- this monster kind of beats your head off something and then he, he grabs Josh at uh, the bottom of his jaw, his jaw up. and then the top of his jaw and then like, pulls his head apart. Yeah, oh, and I've I, seen that one. And like, I'm just sat there going, well, that happened. Um, <laughs> so In a tutorial. In a is tutorial. it right what they say about the um, <clears throat> switching of weapons is really slow? I don't know because I've only got one weapon so far. But oh, I, they but, say like it's really slow, and if you get touched while you're switching, it cancels the switch. I I, 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 I will say the healing animation takes approximately a fortnight. <laughs> oh god, that's not good in middle of a battle. Well, uh, it's de- it's designed so that it's like risk or reward. Do you take the time to do it because you're vulnerable when you do it as well? Because you get down on one knee and he ejects the thing into his neck. I suppose it's realistic. Yeah. Anyway, but it's, uh, I'll talk about that in further detail once I've played more of the game. Like I say I've only played the opening section of it. Um, but what I do need to talk about is a game called Ixion which I got a, a, a code for. Uh, this is by... Who made this one? I had it right on my screen before. This is by Bulwark Studios, who last game they made was Warhammer 40k Mechanicus. This is a science fiction city builder where you um, take the role of the administrator on the uh, uh, Tikkun. Tikkun? Tikkun? Something like that. Space station. Uh, which is a colony ship. You are leaving Earth because Earth has uh, abused all of its resources and you're going to look for a new home amongst the stars. And it, so it, you are, the Tikkun is a, um, it's a kind of cylindrical ship uh, with six sections to it and you build those sections out and in, in, in build up the circle, build it up. Um, you've got to manage colonists, you've got to manage manufacturing, you've got to keep the thing going in space because space is a dangerous place. You know, you have to like constantly be like battling between building, uh, building new stuff on the outside of the ship versus repairing the hull from like fragments of space dust. Uh, you have to keep people happy. It's got the same mechanic that Frostpunk had, where people will come to you if they're pissed off with you, and they can, you know, be very unhappy with you, and things can happen. You have to have some some tough choices. Some tough choices. Uh, so far, I haven't had an instance where I've had to put the children to work. That has not been a thing yet. That was a thing in Frostpunk. Yeah, I remember that in Frostpunk. <laughs> that was a thing in Frostpunk. That was, uh, I was like, yeah, get them earning. Yeah, get them, get them, get them down the mines. It worked in Yorkshire. Um, yeah, exactly. The gravy mines. <laughs> uh, there, there are other things. So, you, you know, you're investigating planets. You are looking for survivors. You are dealing with other kind of factions. They're very corporatized factions as well. There's a big kind of fucking whale and yutani thing going on here with uh, the company you work for is called Dolos AEC. And they are very, mm-hmm. very whale and yutani um, I haven't encountered anything like involving aliens yet. That might be a thing. I don't know. Yet. I couldn't say. I don't want to say it's not going to happen in case it does. Um, yeah, you might have you might have a tough choice to make. Do you sacrifice a colony for to, to grab a weapon of mass destruction or not? True. Um, what I'll say is that because I've played a lot of city builder games o- over the years, it is not the greatest one I've ever played, but it is a very mm-hmm. good one. 
Yeah. It is it is on the same tier as Frostpunk. It's not as narratively stark as Frostpunk is. It's not going to have you making awful choices all the time. It's more about general management things, and it's not as detailed as, say, something like City Skylines, where, you know, you have to get to the far end of a fart of how your city works on that. <sighs> city Skylines so good. Oh, it's very good, but very complicated. <laughs> um, yes. I've also been playing this on the Steam Deck, um, because that's where I play most of my Runs PC good. games. Runs good to a point. When you have, <laughs> when, you, when your um, administration gets to a certain size, it kind of starts to chug a bit because it's thinking about a lot of stuff. Ah, Got to knock those cool. graphics down and limit the frame rate to 30 frames a second to keep it going. Um, and you will cane through your battery playing it. But it works. Uh, and it's 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 very addictive game. It's definitely got a just one more turn kind of aspect to it. You know, it's not turn based, but you know, it's just got a, you know, oh, I'll just do a little bit more. Oh, I'll get that building built. Oh, I'll get this resource going. That kind of thing. Uh, when I, the first night I was playing playing it, like I'd been playing kind of over the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, it was about midnight when Pip went to bed. I says, oh, I'll just do another couple of things, and then I looked at the clock, and it was three in the morning. <laughs> So it's oh, good. It's they, really good. They, it's, they, get, they get you those games. Oh, it's uh, you can't play Oodles, absolutely. It's, it's a dopamine no. factory, this game. I um, love them. I love them type of games. It's good. I like the aesthetic. I like the ambient soundtrack to it. Um, there is a bit of a story in there. It's fine, but you don't play these games for the story. No. Um, it's, just, it's just a, yeah, it's an addictive little dopamine creator. And I think you should all check it out. Especially anyone who likes a good city builder will enjoy this. I I like city builders on my phone though, and you're against that. So I wish it. I don't out on phone. I don't think this would run on a phone. It's very detailed. Like I say, it really pushes the Steam Deck. Like I'm, my phone's more powerful than a Steam Deck. Rude. <laughs> it is though. Yeah, but your phone's made by Samsung. The battery will catch fire any day now. <laughs> oh, it could do that every time. My, my 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 hands are like Freddy Krueger's, mate. <laughs> How is the uh, battery for the Steam Deck holding up against with most games these days? Do you get a good playtime out of it? It's fine. Uh, like, I, I mean, it's usually different per game, though, isn't it? I mean, like, like the Switch. I mean, yeah. Of course, of yeah, course. If, if, if I'm playing a AAA game on the Steam Deck, I can get maybe three hours out of it, depending what it is. If I'm playing a, mm-hmm. if I'm playing Hollow Knight, I can probably go for about five. Um, Perfect. The the difference is with it, it's less the battery life; it's more the heat output because it gets very hot on the back where the vents are. And one side of the vents, you'll know the stick is like right next to your the fingers on your right hand. Mm-hmm. So there's been a couple oh. of times I've been playing something particularly intensive. I was like, hmm, why are my fingertips hot? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> ow! 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 Uh, but yeah, battery life is fine in it. Plus, I mean, I don't leave it. I, I, I very rarely leave the house with it. So you know, most of the time I'm right next to the charger anyway. It's just handy for playing yeah. on the sofa. Yeah, that's it. That's it, isn't it? But uh, yeah, I, I I really rate Ixion. I think uh, people who like City Builders will have a really good time. It's got a very deep tech tree. Uh, it'll keep me busy for a long time. <sighs> You've sold me on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go. I mean, it's only on Steam though. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to uh, install it on your laptop, Oodles. Oh, you have to play with a mouse. I don't want to. I don't want to stand <laughs> up or sit up and play a game like I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> mouse and keyboard controls only on Forty. It's not got controller support. Never mind. If Never you do, mind. If, also, if you do end up playing it on Steam Deck, use use my um, uh, use my patent for it. Because I've, I've put I will one. Do. I've published one. I will do, sir. Excellent. What a week we've had. Absolute spellbinding stuff from everyone. Let's move on to Three the main us, topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to the main topic now. This was um, a pick from Stig's little bowl. Who was it that picked it again? I can't remember. Lee Davies. Lee Davies, and it's a good one. I really enjoy this topic. Um, basically, he wanted us to assemble a fighting team from media. <laughs> the fighting game, wasn't it? Not a fighting team. Fighting game, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. Fighting game, yeah. I just writ team, and I read the autoprompter. So <laughs> someone must have changed it. Never changed You're Ron Burgundy? I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> uh, yes, so I'll start, because I like mine. So I had a... F- <laughs> I would hope you like if yours. I, I do. I really do. I, I've, I had a few. So I did have a few ideas for this, and I didn't want to bring something obvious like me. So instead, I brought something obscure but quite interesting. Now, for our American listeners, this will be nothing to you. Picture the scene the Capcom logo flashes on screen. <laughs> a 
sweeping desert shot swoops in. Smash cut to a city skyline, over to a jungle scenario, and finally a mountain top. Then a big sign says, not in this game. Then the music swells into, duff, 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 duff. stick a pony in me pockets, I'll <laughs> fetch a suitcase from the van. That thing jump comes in. That's right, I'm launching the Only Fools and Arses fighting game called Only Fools Melee. So, <laughs> <coughs> get ready. The roster. Del Boy Trotter, with his special move of a briefcase and Reliant Regal super van fatality. Think of it. Could be good. Uh, Rodney Trotter with his spliff and moaning, basically. <laughs> <laughs> his fatality is he moans you to death. Yeah, because, oh God, Rodney don't half moan. Um, Grandad with his double TV smash because I always thought it weird that Grandad had two TVs <laughs> and he watched them both at the same time um, Uncle Albert makes his appearance with um, his during the wool speech that makes the opponent's head explode <laughs> sounds a bit like Biggie doesn't he Uncle Albert uh, oh, wow. Trigger Trigger has his broom obviously and he can attach different things to his broom it's the same broom he's had all his life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mickey Pierce is there in his hat with his boomerang. <laughs> Mickey Pierce is a bit of a wide boy, isn't he? He's a bit of a, a, bit of a geezer. Um, Marlene and Boise are a dual character that juggle each other around and throw money at folk. So they're like a, <laughs> a dual character. You've seen them on some fighting games, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. But does he, um, does he use his laugh to his advantage as well? Yeah. 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 Marlene does that. Marlene. And Denzel has his uh, truck and takes the opponent, opponents to Hull and back as his fatality. Do you remember that? <laughs> I mean, that would be a fatality for most people. Yeah, who yeah. wants to go to Hull? Um, many other lesser characters are involved, and the stages consist of um, the top of Nelson Mandela House, and the player can be knocked down onto the car park. Do you know, like on uh, Dead or Alive, it's a 3D fighter, by the way. <laughs> Is, are, so are you going to have a big Trotters Independent Traders logo at the top of it as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, at, uh, we've also got inside and outside the Nag Z. You can punch them out of the window at the Nag Z into the car park. You've got the market, the courthouse, Boise's house, and the special stage Margate when they go on the <laughs> Jolly Boys outing. <laughs> so that, that will be good. Um, again, published by Capcom and developed by Arc System Works of Blaze Blue fame. <laughs> so, yeah, the guys that make the anime <laughs> fighting game Blaze Blue are going to make only fools and horses. <laughs> uh, the DLC, we've got, a, we've got a year's worth of stuff coming across, you know, like um, Super Smash Brothers. Uh, this D- DLC will consist of a Faulty Towers pack, uh, the young ones, Open All Hours and Black Adder characters. And it's already been reviewed with a Metacritic score of 99. 99? It takes the world by storm. It takes the world by storm and becomes the number one game at Evo competitions and number one streamed game on Twitch four years in a row. <laughs> it's an absolute success. Only Fool's Melee. I'm so glad I didn't go with this because it was one of the ideas I was looking at, all <laughs> British sitcoms. <laughs> what do you think about releasing, <laughs> releasing a fight stick in the shape of the Robin Reliant? Uh, Regal, Regal. So Robin Regal, actually. Sorry. You know Come that. on, fucking hell! Yeah, yeah. I, I, all that, all that's coming. Um, again, we've got a few years plans. We could branch out. Oh, you could have DLC like, of unlockable um, costumes with the Batman and Robin. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just about to say, yeah. Of course, we can do all that. You can. There is a single player mode to it. You know, like Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Where it's about how um, the Trotters. Um, Become millionaires and they lose the million. Who's the bad guy? Who's the main bad guy? Uh, Slater, the policeman. I would have thought it'd be the tax man. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) HMRC. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, um, I think it's going to be, it's it's going to be huge and I hope you enjoy what I brought to the table. Um, I'm after, um, for 30% equity on this game. (laughs) Uh, Different show that one. Uh, yeah, we're not doing oh, Dragon's it? Den. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always trying to flog stuff. Because you're yeah, a that's, that's you're Yorkshire's thing. answer to Del Boy. I am. I am absolutely. I just, I, I, I just didn't want to do something obvious like oh, I'm going to do the Terminator fighting game. I hope none of you have done that now. I'm so sorry if you have. But yes, we shall move on to Candy's Bethesda game that she's going to do. No, not Bethesda game. So <laughs> mine is a Mortal Kombat star game, and it's called 
Kenka Gakko Old Man Dojo. And this is um, <laughs> this is a fighting game um, that involves every all the best characters that Gary Oldman have played has played. So oh, we've got okay. yeah. we've got Sirius Black, Commissioner mm-hmm. Gordon, <clears throat> Count Dracula, yeah. Drexel Spivy, Sid Vicious, yep. Winston Churchill, Mason Verger, and an unlockable character is Tiptoes. Yeah. <laughs> say, if you didn't put Tiptoes in there, I would have been. That is a role of a lifetime. <laughs> And he's gonna he's gonna be like if you play as tiptoes, it's like playing as gone in Tekken Three, where you can't hit him. Literally, yeah, he's gonna so be like the small. Tasmanian devil. Just all absolutely all over the show. So starting with Sirius Black, um you can play as a human with magical abilities or you can transform him into his dog, obviously. To, but he's he's only got biting power then instead. Spoiler alert. Oh yeah, sorry guys. Um Finishing move is ripping out the opponent's jugular, eating their face, then shitting in the gaping chasm that remains. Uh, okay, so it's a, kid, it's a kid's game then, yeah? No, this is for Mortal, Com- Mortal Kombat. Uh, Commissioner Gordon, he has a high defence due to a concealed bulletproof vest. He can use a pi- uh, pistol, but he has a bit of a disadvantage on ranged attacks due to being short-sighted. He needs glasses. Uh, his mm-hmm. his finishing move is throwing the pen from his notepad, you know, the police officer's notepad, sort of ninja star style onto the op- opponent's throat, smashing their head into you know, the back. You know he's not a police officer, don't you? He was at one point. <laughs> he ke- he's, he's, a, he's a commissioner. <laughs> he keeps the notepad for old time's sake. It's a lucky charm. Uh, okay. So, yeah, no, Fair he uh, throws it into their throat, smashes their head into the back signal, and then it will turn the back signal on and it will just, like, burn their eyes straight out. So Batman doesn't appear at all? No. It's a, it's a no. rights issue. Well, maybe, yeah. It's a rights issue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll see if we can work with Warner Brothers on that one, maybe in the future. Uh, Count Dracula, so he has massive health regeneration abilities when attacking, but starts to grow old and weak if he doesn't land any hits. So under oh. 25% HP, he can transform into a bat to try and regain some health, but he only has one bite attack, so he's hard to hit, but he, he, can, he can hit very gently. Um, oh, is he not that horrible bat he turns into in Bram Stoker's Dracula where it hangs from the ceiling? Like, <laughs> I mean, he's not that thing. No, he's more of a, a little just a bat bat. bat, yeah. Um, mm. So his finisher is to sort of desanguinate the opponent, freeze the blood into spikes and throw the spikes into the em- enemy like a stake. I think I might have stolen that one. I think that's an actual Mortal Kombat move. I think that it's is a Mortal Kombat move. Yep. <laughs> was it in the film? <laughs> it's Scarlet's move. Yeah. So wait, so Zero's I'll, done many things that like that as well. <laughs> yeah. So that's a classic fighting move. So Drexel from True Romance, um, mm-hmm. he's got barely any... Is he going, ah, stop it. <laughs> Yeah, he annoys everyone like that. <laughs> so he's got barely any defence because he's only dressed in a sort of open kimono and slippers, but yeah. he's extremely fast and he can use a machine gun. Um, and his finishing move is to throw chopsticks and scalding hot sweet and sour sauce into the opponent's face because he's always there eating his Chinese, isn't he? Yeah. And then smashing over the, them over the head repeatedly with the swinging with a swinging lampshade. You'd expect him to do moves like capoeira as well. We can, we can throw that in. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, Sid Vicious, mm. he's weak in attack, but he takes barely any damage due to being numb to the pain on heroin. He can use his base as a weapon, <laughs> so he can use his, uh, the strings and everything to strangle people. He can just the powers bludgeon of people. He can just startle people with his terrible playing. And then his finishing move, obviously, he's going to... He's going to whip out some syringes, <laughs> stick them into the neck of the uh, you opponent. You killed me, man. <laughs> Sorry about that, Oodles. We was, was, was terrible playing. I was like, God, he's such a shit musician. He was. <laughs> oh, it was bad. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, the heroin needles get in the neck, then get his stabby stabber out and stab him to death. <laughs> <laughs> Winston Churchill, slow but extremely tough. He can use his bowler hat as a ranged attack like odd job. Uh, his finishing move is uh, like it's a Molotov cocktail made of his whiskey, and he lights it with with a cigar. And then once his opponent has burnt to a uh, child corpse, he plants a Union Jack in like on a spike into his chest. Does he say for Britain? Yes, <laughs> Britain. That one. Then uh, Mason Berger, we've got. Um, well, he's slow, obviously, due, due to being in a wheelchair. But he only like you can only attack him with low attacks, so that's the only thing that will hit him. And the wheelchair is weaponized. Um, he can take poppers and he'll become immune to pain. So his HP is. Puts his face off. Yeah, his HP damage is, take, is, is halved. 
And his finishing move, obviously, is feeding his opponents to the pigs. Um, yeah, yeah. And then the stages, obviously, Azkaban. Uh, we've got Arkham Asylum. Dracula's... You forgot um, Fifth Element. Yeah, Zorg. I didn't want to put him in. He's shit. Fuck you. What? Yeah. Ooh. I know. He can... over. He can be in the DLC. He's got that and big... I don't know that he's much about him. He's big gun. Yeah. Yeah, use that big gun and it can... It can leak like a leaks in that film <laughs> i don't want leaky characters <laughs> you've got dracula in it he's not leaky basically leaks for a living he leaks, other, leak. pe- he leaks other people you're fucking tiptoes in bastard it. yeah tiptoes isn't it <laughs> uh we've got a stri- he's probably got a real name tiptoes i know he does but i, but I prefer it. just tiptoes <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he does tip-toes. have a character name he's tiptoes though <laughs> Strip Club, we've got the 100 Club for the uh, Sex Pistols, one for Sid Vicious, Houses of Parliament, obviously, and the Pig Ranch for Mason Verger. Mm. So I think that's I'm kind of into it. Yeah, I reckon it's a what's it. What's it called again? Uh, Ken Kagako Old Man Dojo. Which... <laughs> <laughs> that's so accurate. That's so accurate. Best, best name ever. Which in like ham so Japanese is uh, Fight School Old Man yep. Dojo. <laughs> Fucking hell. I'm in. I'm in. Thanks. Can't wait for the DLC with Zorg, the actual main character of Gary Oldman's back catalogue. <laughs> um, no, what about Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy and stuff like this? There's, there's so many more. There's, there's, I mean, there's loads that you can add. As I said, DLC in future, there's almost, you know, it, nev- it never ends. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, Slow, yeah. ho- <laughs> slow Horses... What else we got? So many. <laughs> the Scarlet Letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. What a guy. What a game. Biggie. Is it? Is it? Okay. The weapon. The, the fighting game. Are you ready for this? So. Space Jam. The fighting game. <laughs> Again, the Capcom theme tune, which Oodles perfectly did, so I'm not going to replicate that, pops up on the screen. And then the modern escapism theme tune comes into play. (laughs) What? That's right. Modern escapism, Podemonium edition, in the style of Capcom's X-Men Street Fighter Ultimate Marvel Capcom style of fighting game. Music by Ross Tregenza. Oh, not either That's of the right. two Modern musicians Escape. on the fucking podcast. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Modern Escapism Network has become the biggest win, podcasting brand in the world. But the role of CEO is a viciously fought for title. There can only be I mean, one king of the podcastle. So, <laughs> CEO's not Biggie, in question. Who it is? Biggie. Yes, you can play as me. My special moves include Biggie's Bundle, which is like a screw pile driver like Zangief. <laughs> Of course you're you got the manoeuvre, the, the biggie, which turns me into like a gold statue, armour-like like Colossus. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you uh, build up your moves and start getting your power bars up, you then I can do a sexy Akuma-style death where I become just so incredibly sexy that all of a sudden as I attack, you get a blue screen of death and your character is knocked out. <laughs> My finishing okay. move is me turning into Karen Cloud with a buster sword to <laughs> slice everyone to death. <laughs> I'd have made that a separate character. If, well, if DLC. you play through DLC skin, the, the main, if you play through the main game, you can then unlock uh, your characters from Scorch Sheep. So obviously, you can unlock as Calbo and then play as them. What the nice. fuck do I get then? Why would um, why would, uh, just anyone, why would in the background <laughs> anyone who's listened to Scorch Sheep want to play as Calbo? <laughs> <laughs> you just instantly die. <laughs> it's a difficult broken. character to master. It's a difficult character to master. I know you've yeah. been playing it for 18 months. You still haven't managed it. <laughs> It'd be like comparable to like Mokujin. Actually, my combat's been pretty good of late. Thanks very much. Anyway, Spoiler alert. Uh, my main backdrop will be a milk depot. Then you have Age to the point of milk. Oh, yeah. Oh. The special moves. There it is. The special moves would include for Oodles a hundred Samba's slap, which is him basically throwing a shoe at the character. Nice. Uh, a spinning hair flick, where he jumps upside down and spins on his hair. Because I've got hair. He will then use nice. as a weapon a sting portrait smash. And then for a finale, he can use an Akuma style again maneuver, but this time he does a Dragon's Quest 11 puff puff finale. Oh, so I'm sucking him off. <laughs> 
<laughs> that cast me. I'm well, telling we don't, you, we don't see that. Um, no, I feel you have it. a drunken master mouth. style fighting style. Mm-hmm. And then you yeah. can also, um, when you build up your power bar, turn into a gunpla mech. Now I'm in. Naturally, you will unlock a, a treble um, character as well if you play through the main game. Very and your backdrop will be a deep dive lounge bar with previous guests sitting there in the background who aren't us. So you'll have Planty and mm-hmm. that F King guy there and so on. Yep. Candy. Do next. She will have a panda berserker attack <laughs> where she launches her cat and it goes full on. But occasionally it will actually turn on her itself. Mm. Doctor yeah. Risk Reward. Yep. You'll have a, a candy machine which will actually chuck out her favourite choice of sweets, which will include Quality Street. <laughs> um, she will be using pizza crusts as projectiles. <laughs> oh, it's the fucking pizza crust. And... <laughs> well, you shouldn't have said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's tantinated to come up. Yeah. Shouldn't have said it. <laughs> Her special uh, finishing move would say uh, she will grab a massive magnum of Prosecco and smash them over the head with it. Yes, I like that. They're, they're heavy glasses as well, those Prosecco, Prosecco bottles. You'd kill somebody with them. You'd yeah. kill someone with one. No, absolutely. Weighty bottom. Uh, your, mm. your unlock will naturally be Capri and Proserpine as like a joint character. What, what's the cat called? Your backdrop. Proserpine. Oh, you said it wrong originally. I, oh, I? I heard it. I heard it. You said Proserpine. <laughs> Oh, okay. Close enough. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Backdrop will be a tattoo parlor with Acid Pearl doing a tattoo in the background. Nice. Jupiter Storm waving at you for attention, and Super Natty Cat will be engrossed in your fight, copying your moves in the background. <laughs> Perfect. Gadget will naturally be using dice rolls for random attacks and modifiers throughout the the uh, the, uh, the fight. Fair enough. He'll also have a keyboard slap maneuver and a guitar smash, but every time he smashes a guitar, he has a little cry. Well, yeah. <laughs> His power up manoeuvre will be a Bioshock Big Daddy morph. Oh, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. No. And your main weapon of choice will actually be a microphone on a stand. Yes. <laughs> and your backdrop will have randomised D and D map. Ooh. I like the idea. As for of that. stick. Huh? I, I like what the idea what? of randomised D and D map. That's cool. What, what would my unlock skin be though? Because I don't play a character in Scorch Sheep. I play all of the characters. A the plan. dungeon master. Yeah, so you can be anybody. You can get, unlock all the characters from Scorch Sheep, but that's a special pack for DLCs. No, your DLC uh, skin would be bigger. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, of course, we have Stiggy, and there is an actual secret code that you can put in the game to unlock the Walker McCoy alternative skin. Yeah, yeah. He will actually oh, have a wrestler's a move list. Person. He looks a bit like of you, though. Yeah, he Only looks a bit, a bit like me, but it's... Yeah. It's from the same neck of woods. Uh, yeah. You'll have all your favourite rest of the moves as your main moves list. That's your finishing on. finale manoeuvre will be that you'll turn into Totoro and do a massive butt slam on your opponent. He didn't dare to name any wrestling moves there, did he? I thought no, he was going to go for him. Swanton Bomb. No, there's, there's so many. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, there's all of them. But Name yeah, one. The point? You, you choose. Huh? Name one. Just name one. Wrestling move. Uh, Power driver. Easiest one. People's elbow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This it's one though, isn't it? Uh, you'll have uh, a cookies um, as projectiles, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which can actually randomly stun the characters. They're enjoying them so much. Uh, your main weapon will be a Cliff Richard calendar, and bin. your backdrop will be a house. Does he toss it behind him as a, as a <laughs> <laughs> Do thousand cuts with the uh, calendars. Uh, your main backdrop will be Howl's Moving Castle or Spirited Away as a main backdrop, so it could be one or the other. The DLC character packs will include guests on the show, which could be D- Debbie Punk, DJ Walsh, Helen O'Hara, um, the Scorch Sheet characters, as mentioned, and the sequelizers will appear in the second game. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that was it. That's as far as I got with my game. I like it. Capcom are going to be busy, aren't they? Oh, yes. They're going to make a lot of money, though. Yeah, that's, that's, that might be better than, um, than the own Fault and Arse's melee. Might be. Only because I'm in it. And I am the main star. Uh, Stig. Okay, so Stig uh, took this seriously. He's probably got he's probably got moves lists. I do have moves lists. <laughs> yeah, <'cause it's> <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was the brief. Give no, I mean we've. Co- we, I meant we were like button configurations. Oh god, no, 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 just that's <laughs> No, it's a my fighting game. A B. <laughs> 
<laughs> my fighting game is going to be made by Nether Realm Studios. So it's going to be the same style of Injustice, Mortal Kombat games, yes. 2D beat 'em up with stages that have interactive weapons and snare it, mm. scenery behind you. Each character is going to get their own special move that will be presented in that you know this Injustice style big cinematic. Move just press where, the back two buttons and it happens. Where everyone should be dead from them, but it doesn't. It just knocks a bit of health off, that kind of thing. Yeah. There's going to be eight playable characters um, in this to start with, and they're all going to be based on characters played by a friend of the pod, Vin Diesel. Yes, into it already. <laughs> it's called the Dieselverse Family Feud. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bang into it. So we're going to go through the characters that no one cares about or has ever heard about first. Um, we have Bloodshot. He stages a wreck street with blown ups, cars, debris that you can interact with and smash opponents into. His moves are camouflage, you can turn invisible, DNA manipulation, so he's actually able to duplicate himself so that you get a noob cybot style like attack out of that. I love and noob. Sonic Scream, which paralyzes the opponents for a few seconds. And his special move. So it, bad. His special move is because all he's got superhuman strength, speed, reflexes, agility. He just knocks the absolute fuck out of you. Like there's nothing, mm-hmm. there's nothing fun about this one. He just literally goes to town on you and beats the fuck out of you. And his winning mm-hmm. catchphrase is "No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great." I just found a random quote. Some of these are characters I've never seen. Bloodshot's such a bad film. <laughs> it looks terrible. I was looking up some, looking up some scenes of it, and I was like, "This looks awful." It's got one of them twists where, where as soon as you, you watch it, you go, they're going to be a baddie. Oh, they are the baddie. <laughs> <laughs> it's got one of them. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got uh, Calder from The Last Witch Hunter. Uh, he's background. <laughs> well. The background to that is a flaming witch tree. It's like a tree with a witch on it, and it's all on fire, um, burning the background, so you can like slam opponents into that and whack them with burning branches and stuff. Uh, he's just—he's got throwing axes, self-explanatory. He's got the sky storm where he uh, performs a disenchantment; it brings a storm from the sky, and he's got regeneration, so you can actually regen his health every now and again. And he has the super hex blin as his special move, which is a big fuck off flaming sword, um, which he uses to kill witches. And he just goes again, goes to town, and there's flames everywhere. It's all pyro and shit going off with the flame. And his winning catchphrase will be, every day I wake up, the world sleeps a little easier. Ugh. These are lines from the <laughs> film, by the way. I know, man. That's the problem. <laughs> now, then I started scraping the barrel for uh, Vin Diesel characters. So some of them were too real and boring. So this one is Santiago from Ark, the game Ark. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's a thing. That's a thing. Yep. Because Vin Diesel's an executive vibe, uh producer on it so he's like put himself in the game yeah uh background would be dinosaur jungle you know mountains in the background you can grab rocks in the front smash them into them you can throw them to dinos in the background you give them a good mauling uh i couldn't find anything interesting on this guy apart from he has a spear an axe and he so that he just uses them and a hardened armor so you can create an armor with which with will stand hardened skin attack from time you know for a set time but he does ride a big fuck off T Rex. <laughs> so right. the T Rex is going to be a special move. T Rex comes out, it jumps on uh, the opponent, it stomps them around, it grabs them, it ragdolls them, it chomps them down, it spits them back up. Big fuck off roar from the T Rex. So you do get a nice little special move from that. Doesn't the um, the Flash do something similar in uh, Injustice where it transports you back yes. in time to T Rex period? Yeah, yeah. And you get the fucked Cretaceous up. period or something like that. I don't know. You, you get fucked up by a T Rex. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. So this is going to be the same, but he's going to be riding the T Rex in all of his <laughs> Vin Diesel glory. Now we get into characters that people actually know. Um, Iron Giant. So the stage is the scrapyard. There's scrap everywhere you can interact with. Um, the Iron Giant's obviously really tall, so I'm going to have to scale yeah. him down a little bit to fit on the screen. But he's still going to be the tallest character. So you've got Big Stomp, you've got an arm cannon, so you can just shoot the opponent with a big iron cannon and a spin and slam so if you've seen the iron giant he can actually turn his body without moving his feet so he just grab you spin around and fucking launch you and any special move is he just turns into the war machine <laughs> when it when he goes berserk and just unleashes yeah. all of his weapons on you it ended it with a big chest nuke blast that reminds me of um biggie you'll remember the sentinels on marvel versus capcom they were always massive yeah, on, yeah, the yeah. on the screen yeah yeah 
So then he'd be big. He'll he'll be from top to bottom yeah. pretty much. Up to his yeah, it does work. Yeah, he's yeah, winning catchphrases. Catchphrases. <laughs> I am Superman because he doesn't say a lot in that film. He doesn't. Um, and next we're on to Groot. So the stage What's his catchphrase. <laughs> I wonder what that'll be. <laughs> the stage will be uh, the city of Xandar. In the back, you'll have the Milano. You'll have the rest of the Guardians cheering on. There'll be Nova Corps people you, in the background. You can grab them and swing them into your opponent, and, and there'll be an Infinity Stone there. You can smash and grab into someone and smash into them. You've got mm. root stuff like Root Smash, where he drives his hands into the ground, and the roots come up and smash them. Spores, where Groot shoots spores as projectiles. And an arm spike, like in the first Guardians film, where he just impales someone, slams them around a bit. I, uh, I love that bit. Yeah, mm. especially the little grin he gives after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love Groot. I like Groot a lot, man. And you'll have, uh, so Groot's, obviously, special move is he'll swing the opponent really fast, throw him in the air, and that's when the Guardians come in. So the ship will fire on you, and then you'll get a blast from everyone. Your Quill will shoot you. You get Gamora slicing you with a blade. Drax hits you with a big punch. Rocket blasts you with a rocket launcher. And then Groot finishes you off by, you know, he turns into the big ball. He'll do yeah. a big ball around you, and he'll squeeze you and slam you into the ground. Ooh. And guess what his winning catchphrase is? We are Groot. <laughs> No, close. It's I am Groot. Oh, fuck, I was close. <laughs> Nearly had it. Yeah, a Groot Tough will that. be Groot will have DLC, so you can. So this one will be based on the tall, lanky version. So you will be able to buy baby adolescent and hench Groot with future <laughs> DLC, or with their own moves and stages, or with their own nice. catchphrase. Yeah. Now we're getting into the uh, the fun, <laughs> the fun Vin Diesel characters. Xander Cage, extreme winter <laughs> sports venue. Loads of skis, <laughs> snowboards, quad bikes interacting with, you can smash your opponent with. Xander uses a variety of projectiles. Um, so because he's a master of all guns, if you've all seen guns. that film, all guns, he'll basically, you'll, you'll do the gun uh, combination and he'll just pull out whatever. It could be a shotgun, could be a machine gun, could be the pistol, could be an Uzi. It's just a multiple choice. It's he's a, random, a master of all guns. A master of all guns, it's just random. Then you've got oh, the fun. bandage bomb. If anyone yeah. remembers that from the film, where you, it's a bandage that you can stick on people and it blows up, so yep. he'll roll past people, stick it on, and they'll stand up and click the detonator and say something cool. I'm not sure what, because he's not very cool. Uh, we've got he's the not. parachute snowboard, so he pulls a cord and a parachute shoots out, and then he flies into you with a snowboard. Because, mm-hmm. you know, com- combining <laughs> snowboarding and parachuting, that's so Xander Cage. Yeah. And then his special move will be a winter sports event where you take on Xander. Xander takes you on through a series of extreme sports like base jumping, snowboarding and motocrossing, but each time the opponent is so shit they just bounce off everything and get hurt, uh, while Xander throws projectiles and guns at you. And his mm. winning catchphrase is, you've just entered the Xander zone. Nice. Oh. <laughs> you missed a trick, though. You could have had the backdrop. Is, 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 um, is stage as a Ramstein concert? I say only a very small part of the film, though. Burn, burn. <laughs> you know, when I actually um, reminds me when I went to WrestleMania, the we got back on the coach, to take us back to the hotel, and the bus driver was watching that, and it just happened to be at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really pissed just watching this. I was like, "Fucking hell!" He was like, "Look at this film. It's best film I've ever seen." I was like, "I, I know this film." Never what, better. I was like, "What the fuck is this film? Ramstein in it?" And he has really, right, really like. Sex that's not very convincing. <laughs> oh yeah, sex with everyone. He's a he's a. It's not very convincing I... though, is it? I don't know. Did you ever watch the follow up? Not not yes, the not the Ice Cube one. Not the Ice Cube one. The one where they brought Xander Cage. The back. Return of Xander Cage. Yeah, yes. I never I watched it. I bet it's terrible. Oh, he's fucking shite. <laughs> <laughs> All these films. Are shit. He has sex with four people in that at the same time. Oh, of course he does. Of course he does. I bet it's like Vin Diesel like looks through his contracts and he's just like, no, this says I only have sex with three people. I need yeah, to I need another one. I need to be four minimum. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's his rider. Four yeah. women. We got so we got two more characters left. We have got Riddick. So it'll be the, it'll be set in the prison. His his backdrop will be the prison from Chronicles, where there'll mm-hmm. prisoners cheering on. There'll be cages and chains that you can use as weapons. Uh, his special move. His moves will be the teacup. Where you smash a metal teacup into your opponent's chest. That is cool, though, in the film. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a flurry of Ulak blades. So you just go to town on you with the Ulak blades. And then a blast from the scar gun. So you shoot five rounds at you and 
blood and detonate them. Uh, the special move, actually, I quite like this one. I think it'd be cool. Uh, the screen goes pitch black because Riddick can see <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> he takes off his goggles and you see the opponent from Riddick's eyes in a black and white star like night vision. And then nice. Riddick uses a number of different blades. Like the That's ne- going to fuck the frame rate up on that game. The Necro, Saber Claw, the <laughs> Ulax, uh, the uh, Ingun knife, and then he shoots them with a gravity gun. And then while they're in the air, shoots them with some barren rounds and detonates them. And he's winning catchphrases. Now the monsters have something to fear. Oh, you're in here with me. On to the main event. <laughs> on to the main event. The big guy, Dom Toretto. The his, <laughs> his stage is the streets of Brazil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the background, you see all the Fast and Furious crew cheering him on. You'll have, um, there'll be a load of barbecues and boxes of Corona that you can pick up and smash over people. <laughs> yes. Uh, because Dom is just a normal guy. He's just a brawler. No. So his moves will just be a tackle. So he'll just tackle you to the ground and beat you with his fists. He's always got I'm a wrench. He's always got a wrench on him. <laughs> so he'll pull a wrench out and he'll swing and hit you with the, the wrench that he keeps in his back pocket. And the Corona where he shakes up a bottle of Corona and sprays it in your face before whacking you over the head with it. Ooh, toxic damage. <laughs> yep. Uh, his special move will be a street drag race where Dom pulls ahead, hits the NOS, and at the same time he throws a cannon NOS out at the opponent whose cars explode. The, opponent's, <laughs> <laughs> the opponent flies out the car. When they get up, Dom and his Fast and Furious buddies fly past. They each take it in turn to drive into the opponent. The last one is Roman who shouts, Ejecto Cedo, cuz! And a car <laughs> seat strapped with bottles of Corona fly out of the car and smash into the fighter. And obviously his winning catchphrase is, I live my life a quarter mile at a time. You know, I'd say you're over egg in the pudding here, but no more than the films do. <laughs> I, I, I literally took everything from the film there, like other than the, you know, the throwing the NOS out. And then there will, to life. there will be a, a um, Mortal Kombat style, uh, you know, when you go up the, the tower, thing, yeah. The tower, tower, yeah. And the bad guy will just be Vin Diesel himself. <laughs> 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 Vin Diesel at a press junket hitting yeah, on reporters. You have to beat Vin Diesel. Nice. I mean, I, what's it called again? <laughs> the Diesel vs. Family Feud. <laughs> <laughs> Follow that gadget. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I, th- I think I can have that. So my game is going to be uh, developed and published by SNK. <laughs> Here we go. Because it needs, it needs some of their top tier artists. Um, 2D. It, oh yeah, 2D. Imagine, uh, but imagine the the the, the opening cutscene. All of the demons in he- are down in hell, and they are chanting and they are cheering. And then the horns go up and the guitars start playing, and the title comes in: "Monsters of Rock." Oh no! It sounds like edge log <laughs> material. There. No, no. The devil has dragged the biggest rock stars in the world down to hell to fight for his favor, and it's going to be brutal. I'm in. So uh, this one is going to be set up like a Smash Brothers game with, uh, with wide multi-tiered arenas. Objective is to either kill your opponent or knock them off the side deeper into hell. All the stages are going to be based on famous tour and festival stages. So for instance, the stage that was used in, the, in that three-year-long Metallica uh, tour for the Black Album. Or Iron Maiden's touring stage from 2001 that they used in Rock and Rio. Yep. Or the infamous uh, back in black stages that ECDC had. Firefest. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you. May- <laughs> I'm not going to put Jar Rule into this. Why not? Because, no. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be, what? There's going to be three main modes for this one. First one is tournament mode, which is 1v1, leading, leading through all the brackets, fight, uh, fighting up until you get to fight against the devil himself. Beat the devil, become the king of hell. That's all it's about. Yes, yes. Then there's the tag team mood, 2v2. You've got to, com- you, you, you to complete the band, effectively. And then, and then there's mosh pit, eight players. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. So, but the big thing is, the soundtrack, because a game like this is going to need a soundtrack. Soundtrack's probably going to be as important as the stars. Oh, yeah. So, it's all Limp Bizkit. No, so you see, the soundtrack's going to be very expansive. It's going to be ri- it's got, it, we'll say it's written by, so, by some metal luminary, maybe Mick Gordon, I don't know. Depends on what, on what we're going to do with it. Bob but, Rock. But, 
each musician will record a stem for each track. So when you fight, you get a unique combination. So for example, James Hetfield's rhythm guitar against Mike Mangini's drums, or Geddy Lee's okay. bass against Slash's guitar. So every time you hear, you'll hear the same tracks, but they're all played ever slightly differently because different musicians playing them. But what we all want is the fight is the fighter lineup and the moves that they're going to have. And I've got quite the list here. This is non-exhaustive, and there will be extreme amounts of mm-hmm. D- DLC for this. It's going to make Smash Bros. Ultimate look conservative. So we'll start off. I've already mentioned him, James Hetfield. His two his his two main moves. So um, the way we're going to do this, just standard kind of kind of uh, uh, beat number moves, but everyone gets two special moves. Um, so James Hetfield's one ones are going to be ride the lightning. Simply enough, pulls out his guitar, lightning shatters down. Um, Stig stole this idea from me. I, I'm I'm telling you because the the next the other one of his is hit the lights, where everything goes dark, but James can see in night vision. Because everyone knows James Hetfield sees in night vision. <laughs> yeah, he does. He eats a lot of carrots. Yeah, ever since uh, ever since <laughs> ever since that pyrotechnics display went wrong in was it Chicago? Either way, um, he's, he's he's had night vision. <laughs> next up, Kirk Hammett. He's got the Sandman, where he where he where he pulls in a tornado of sand that then punches someone off the side of the stage with a giant sandy fist. Does he have his Boris Karloff guitar? Well, he does because he has to pull that out for the for for his second move, Saint Anger. Which is where, uh-huh. which which is where he where he will pin down his opponent, use his guitar to beat them. Go! I promise guitar solo. I promise the guitar solo. <laughs> uh, Lots of slamming dolls. <laughs> uh, next up uh, from Guns N' Roses, Slash. First of his moves is Night Train. That's right, it's a massive train that just comes through the arena. <laughs> <laughs> Second one, Civil War. Axel Rose jumps on stage and the two of them argue and in the resulting melee it gets all of the other competitors and, into it. He's Axel Rose in his boxer shorts, please. Of course he is. Man never gets dressed these days, but it's also fat Axel Rose. <laughs> in his boxer <laughs> shorts. With the cornrows. <laughs> You're in the jungle, baby! <laughs> Which is Mick Hucknall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Richard Branson somehow. S- yeah. Somehow, yeah. Oh. Uh, then from Iron Maiden, we're bringing Bruce Dickinson. Could Num- be an aeroplane, please. Well, uh, num- number of the beast is going to get flight six 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 to cr- to crash into your yes. opponent. Nice. He's obsessed with telling people as a pilot. Yep. <laughs> and then the trooper, uh, Bruce Dickinson, is, is 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 going to channel Eddie and become Eddie for a moment to then punch someone. But it's Eddie in the. Uh, uh, Crimean War outfit. Yes, yes, from the album cover. Yeah, from, uh, yep. Then from also from Iron Maiden, bass player Steve Harris, uh, bringing up his first special move, uh, West Hammers. Yeah, because that's Ollie West. Yeah, <laughs> where literally his bass turns into a giant hammer. <laughs> yep. And then Ace is high, where he gets to fight uh, fight in a Spitfire and shoot your opponents. Yeah, of course, nice. Of course. Yeah. Then we're bringing in from Rush, Geddy Lee. <laughs> his first, his his first spirit. Has he got the longest entrance out of all the characters? <laughs> of course he does. Fly, flies in in his own personal jet with an owl on the front. Uh, the first yeah. of his special moves is the trees, where <laughs> where he starts to sing a lovely lilting lullaby as uh, tree uh, tree branches come out of the ground and kind of grab people and drag them down. Yep. And then the spirit of radio, which is a little quite similar to ride the lightning, but instead of it being lightning coming down from above, it's kind of sound waves blasting out. So it's kind of like an AOE blast and great song. Such a good song as well. And from Judas Priest, we've got Rob Halford. Oh, yeah. Um, Painkiller himself. Yeah, well, Painkiller is one of his special moves where, um, yes. where, where, he, where he, will, he will hold one of his opponents and he will dress them up in the fetish wear that he wears on stage and smash <laughs> yes. them into the ground. <laughs> mm. And then uh, Breaking the Law which then gets censored over the top because it takes the true literal meaning of what breaking the law is for. And unfortunately, we can't show that to an audience. No. Dirty. Dirty. Uh, then from Dream Theatre, John Petrucci. Um, he's, mm. he's, 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 he's quite a boring competitor, but he does a lot of damage, but it takes a lot of inputs to get the, the moves out. Um, first one is Constant Motion, where he just keeps playing the guitar faster and faster and faster and faster, and then the person in front of him dies of boredom. Um, <laughs> That's Dream Theater all. all you've encapsulated that perfectly. Yep. And then, uh, then his second move is the Glass Prison, which is 
which basically puts everyone in it, puts that person into a glass prison. They can't move, they can't fight. They're vulnerable to attack from all directions. That one's great in the eight player melee. And then they also die of boredom. And they also die of boredom. <laughs> um, then we get Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> in between backbiting, uh, you get Bark at the Moon, where he turns into a werewolf. Nice. I love that image at the end of that that, 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 video, that, that, that music goes, video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the campest werewolf ever to exist. So oh, fucking good. <laughs> I love Blonde Ozzy. I love him so much. Uh, and uh, Yeah, and, and then No More Tears, where, mm, where, yeah. where he holds them down and pours shampoo in their eyes. <laughs> Can a special She's move be bite- getting Sharon out? Sharon! Yeah. She's not She's biting surreal. heads off bats either. She just throws dog poo at people. <laughs> No, was he not? Would you get arrested? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the biting of bats is just one of his normal moves. Just his normal move. Yeah. Then we're the, then we're bringing in the big hard hitters here. The the the, the, the real OGs, Jack Black. Yes. Rigagoo. Yes, with with his with his first special bo- uh, special move, Wonder Boy, where he be- where he, where he becomes a superhero. Who can kill a yak from two hundred yards away with mind bullets? <laughs> That's, That's telekinesis, telekinesis Kyle. That. There yeah. we go. <laughs> About the power to move you. Um, mm. <laughs> and then his other move is referred to as the D, which uh, yeah, that one gets censored as well. Yeah. yeah. And last up, <laughs> because you can't have one without the other, Kyle Gas, the actual musician, the actual musician of the band, <laughs> who uh, br- who brings up uh, his two special moves are. Uh, the tribute, where he will just start mm-hmm. playing tribute, and all the other fighters will stop because you can't yes. you can't do anything when someone starts playing tribute on a guitar. Mm-hmm. And his uh, and his other one is Classico, where he starts playing Bach music so fast, he, and his, his costume changes to be kind of seventeenth century Regency, and he and then pre- everyone is like all oh, all clapping, impressive, and he smashes them over the head with his guitar. <laughs> mm. Brilliant. The devil is to be played by Dave Grohl in the Tenacious D guys. My fucking horn! Yeah. Uh, more rock stars to be unlocked via a DLC and season pass system, including hi- historic, read dead, rock stars. Including Jimi Hendrix, Lemmy, Meatloaf, and more. Oh, Lemmy's immortal. Oh, Meatloaf, not would, dead, really. Meatloaf would have some great. Um, yeah, one of his moves, moves. heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, mm. yeah, that's, yeah that's, so, so that's my idea. Monsters of rock. And the, the, the whole idea, it, the whole idea would be all the characters in it. Obviously, the, it's like kind of cartoony, stylized, like the actual graphics of it. But it would be those musicians being in it, doing voice lines, recording um, uh, their stems for the tracks. So that's why that's why the uh, the dead rock stars would have to be DLC because you can't have them. You can't have them do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not impossible. It's just more them, difficult. That's, that's the one that would potentially get made. Yeah, it would. would. (laughs) Yeah, we've seen weird, seen weirder games. I I mean, I'm surprised you haven't put Marilyn Manson in it as the baddie. No, no, why not? Because he actually is. Then you'd have to pay. Because then you'd have to pay him, wouldn't you? And then you'd have to give him him money. (laughs) I always give him money. I still give him money today. (laughs) No, I love him. Not Brian. He's my god. He's my god. Brian, come to me, Brian. No, no. You're a very stupid girlfriend, Brian. 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 <laughs> excellent. All excellent. Fantastic. Fantastic. We are creative geniuses. All those games are going to be going to be made. They're going to be made. So, as always, links to all our extracurricular activities are in the show notes and at modernescapism.co.uk. And please consider becoming a patron to help support our endeavour. And again, please, please, please give us five star reviews. I mean, it don't cost you anything. No. At all. And we we get like little dopamine kicks from yeah, it make and us happy and it gets us up awareness. in the charts <laughs> yeah charts man come on Christmas number one let's become them the Christmas number one podcast <laughs> I Imagine. don't think that's a thing is it we're starting it's this now. year it's it's it now. It's now. <laughs> we'll be at the top anyway mm-hmm, mm-hmm. next week it's our patron vote this week we're giving you a Christmas treat we're going to let you vote for five things one from each of us um, you guys, as patrons, choose. If you're not patrons, you're fucking idiots. So, <laughs> stop abusing the audience, Oodles. No, they are tight. It costs one pound to become a patron. One English pound plus VAT. And yes, if you are not a patron, this is the end of the episode for you. And 
See you next week. But if you are a patron, we'll meet you around the back. Bye. 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 Bye, fuck nuts. <laughs> <laughs>